this is the final image from the first time I created the video, but the video ran for 35 minutes and I thought that was a bit too long for anyone to watch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this right back to the beginning and go in for a, an abbreviated version of the edit just to show you how a, the image came together using the new AI masking and other elements within Luminar Neo. So I'm going to delete everything and then we are going to start from the beginning. Okay, so we'll start from the beginning here and everything that I created this image with, I'm going to reset that as well. And let's go into edits and discard edits. So everything that I created this image with, this composite with, is, has now all been loaded in here. So you're going to see this being built up. I am going to go through it slightly quicker than 35 minutes. So let's see if I can even half the time with this. So my first image will be that one. And as you can see, it is filling the aspect ratio of the image that's already there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that over a bit uh, just so that it's roughly where it was when I created it. So let's take it up to 100%. So that's it there. I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to build this up stage by stage. No edits at the moment. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the background elements, which are this image here, which is the Kerrang in Sky. And I'm going to scale that down a tiny bit and just take it to there, take it over there and then bring it back up. Now, the reason I'm bringing it back up is because I'm going to tilt it that way and bring it in there. And that might be too much of a tilt. So I'm going to extend that out slightly. Now, as you see, that has a sky already in it. So I have to blend that in to this sky here and I'm going to use the AI masking to do it. So I'm going to select AI mask and once it's done that I'm going to select the mountains and I'm going to go for that. So I'm going to go back to adjustments. So it has removed the sky for me but because that's in the foreground now I have to send that back. So I'm just going to drag it behind the figure. Now that it's there, I have to make a couple of edits on it because it's slightly too contrasty here. So the first edit I'm going to do is I am going to go in to the brush and I'm going to take the strength down and I'm going to take the size up a bit and I'm just going to paint up here. And it helps if I go into erase and I'll do that. And now I'm going to take the size just the brush in just slightly closer and that's just really to feather the edges of the mountains. I'm not touching the mountains, I just want to feather them into the background. And we have that effect. It's just to give you the effect of the clouds coming over the mountains. So as simple as that. Now it doesn't look too great here but I'm actually going a little bit faster with this one than I did previously. So the next thing is add another background in and in this case it is the same one again and you'll see that drop in and we're going to scale that down in size and I'm going to squash it up there slightly, bring it up and then I'm going to flip it and the reason I'm flipping this one is because I want to put it underneath the truck. So I'll put it about there just now and then drag it down. And that gives me my background elements. Now I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger in here. Just to around there. And it makes the landscape look as if it flows all the way through. Now I'll jump back and edit these later. I'm only building the images up. Next, the birds or the moon. So let's go into see all and let's go in for the moon. So that will drop in again following the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So let's just try and get it round again. And that's okay there. Take it down in size. Because as you can guess, the moon's going to fill that area there. So I'm going to put the moon in just around about there. Take the opacity right up and go for a screen blend with this. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to mask this. 
But before I do that, I'm actually going to take the opacity back because we've got a haze around the Earth. If this is the Earth, we've got a haze around the Earth. So the Moon is not going to seem just as strong. There we go. Uh, next, I am going to get into the brush. Now this time, that size of brush is actually okay and the strength is okay there as well. So I'm going to click a couple of times here. And it's just really to fade the Moon out further. Just like that. So as if we've got more kind of real world type thing. That's the moon in. The next one in is the buds. So we're building this image up of all the components that we need. I think it's that one. It is indeed. Uh, all the components we need for this before we actually start editing the image. Now, it's up to you if you're doing composites, how you actually work. I had made this one previously in the video, so I knew what elements were going to come together to make this. It, it's making this edit for me just slightly quicker. And I'm going to do that and place that roughly there. It probably won't be the same as the, the original one, but at least you get the idea for where it's going to be. Now the birds, I'm going to choose the multiply here. And the reason for that is screen does that with it. So if we go into multiply, it will multiply the cause. And there we go. That is actually quite good at that. Another thing that I'm going to do straight away with this is I am going to put a smart contrast in those birds as well. And that helps with that. Couple of birds here and over here. So again, we drop them behind. And that one there I'm actually going to take out because it looks as if it's a part of our costume. So I'm going to go back into Layer Properties, back into Masking, go into Brush, Erase, take the size right down and just remove that one totally. And it helps if I put the strength right up, it saves me doing it two or three times. So there we go, that's now gone. That's the image built up to where I need it to be. So moving on with this, what I need to do is now create the atmosphere and everything within the image. So for that, I'm going to get back into my background layer and Luminar has it built in, so why not use it? Sun rays, place sun center. And I'm going to bring it down to about roughly this area here because we can see there's quite light there. We can see it's warmer there, but it's too much for the image there. So I'm just going to bring the amount in just about there. That looks okay at that just now. I think the length of the sun rays is a bit too long there. And I'm going to get into the sun setting, so I'm going to make the radius slightly bigger. The glow amount just slightly more than the warmth. I'm going to take the warmth in just to kind of sit with the yellows in there and the, sun, the length of the warmth of the sun rays as well. So now that that's in, we have to play with the mountains. So for the mountains, what I'm going to do is there's hardly any contrast. The further back in a scene you go, the contrast is, uh, disappears. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same with this. But how we're, we're going to do it slightly differently with this one. What we're going to do is we're going to add a glow into this. And it's a soft focus glow. And you'll see that happening. Then I'm going to get into the advanced settings and I'm going to increase the softness for this. Not too much, just so there's a nice warm glow there. And I'm going to take the contrast back just to around about there. That I'm quite happy with. But the other thing that I need to change with this is there's a lot of yellow there and it's a greeny yellow. So I need to change that to a warmer tone. So I'm going to get into colour. Hue, Saturation and Luminance and I'm going to pull the yellows over just slightly probably about there that again I'm quite happy with so that's minus 27 it's maybe just a bit too much minus 27 and let's go for the saturation of it let's just build it up slightly so we're going for that. So we've got the warm colours into the cooler tones at the top of the image. So I'm going to go into the second one here, which is that one, and do the same again. So that was hue saturation. The yellows, I'm going to take them down to minus 27. Minus 29 will be fine for the purposes of the video. And I'm going to increase the saturation slightly. 
and then I am going to get into glow and I'm going to push the warmth in there as well and increase the softness. So that's that. That's The image is built up now. Everything that we have now in this is just minute edits to deal with. And there's a couple in here, which is the structure. And let's just push the structure in here slightly. We don't want it too much. That I'm quite happy with. I'm also going to get into the details and just add a tiny bit of touch of details in here. I am going to go up to Enhance. I'm going to push that now. I could do Sky Enhancer, but nothing's going to happen because it's a PNG that I've dropped in here. So nothing's going to happen, although it says it's available. It's a PNG I've dropped in, so it's not going to do it. There's no Sky in it. Now go into Develop. Now I can drop the exposure slightly on this. And the reason I can do that is because we want to create that contrast of light, the objects closer, more contrast. So let's go in for a sharp contrast as well. Quite happy there as well. I'm only using the basic editing for this. I'm not going into too much detail just to show you how to build a composite up and the kind of steps that you have to kind of think about depending on how you work. The next thing I am going to do is go into Relight AI and I'm going to take the brightness near down. Closer to is more contrast. Let's see what it does. Just about there. That's okay. Brightness far. Just about there. And the reason I'm doing that, hopefully you see the fact that that's lighting up slightly more. The depth of it I can play around with. Just about there, yep, that looks okay. And I don't know if you've noticed, but in the background here, there's a tiny piece of this sticking out. So let's go into the masking. Let's take a brush and make sure we're on a raise and let's get rid of that just in there. So that should now disappear. And again, that's blended that in quite well. Looking over the entire image, everything looks fine now. So we're just going to do the finishing touches. Now, this is a build up using uh, ProEdu assets. I use assets from ProEdu.com and from Neostock. And another plugin that I use as well is Honor It Glow. These all help. What I normally do is I will do a composite in Photoshop and if I think it will translate okay into Luminar Neo, I'll do it in Luminar Neo so that perhaps it gives you some inspiration to try them. And this one translated quite well across in there. Now, I could take it into Honor It Glow after this for the saved document, but I'm not going to do that I, because a lot of the plugins, I because it is a part of my job, I pay for them anyway. And I don't see the point in paying for them if you're not going to do this on a regular basis. Uh, not to do MD out of any finances or any companies out of them, I highly recommend them. You've got ProEdu.com, Neostock and Composite Nation. I highly recommend those uh, if you're doing composites, if you don't already have them. Now, I'll jump back to this and I've noticed a small anomaly here and that anomaly is the sky showing through because I've blended that and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to go back into masking and I'm going to make sure it's in paint and I'm going to paint that back in there. I don't want that set. That's it there. And it's going to add contrast back in, which is fair enough. I'm going to choose the erase now and I'm going to take the strength down and I'm just going to take off the top of that mountain there just so that they blend in. Now, the other thing I can do to stop this happening is I can increase the size of that if I want, but I'm not going to for this because the sky is fighting with this image. And as I say, I understand your time is valuable. So I'm going to move into the last few parts of this. And as we're going to see all, I have pro edu assets in here and you'll notice there's different colors and everything. So I'm going to use a couple of them and I'm also going to use ones that are built into Luminar Neo. So the first one I am going to bring on is this, which is this tiny light leak here. And I am doing this to place it there. 
There is nothing there at all that even indicates there should be a light coming from there. I'm doing this because it's my image and I felt it was good and it made the image build up here. So we're not looking for realism. We're actually just enjoying what we're doing here. So I'm going to place that roughly about there. It gives a nice wee cut and a nice break to that part of the image. I'm going to add another one. Uh, so as you see, this is just a build up of these. And the next one I'm going to add is the same one again. But I'm going to use it this time to highlight something that is in the image. And I'm going to take that down because we've got the light in the background here. And I'm going to take it down even further than that, actually. I'm going to take it down to about there. I'm going to place it over here. And make it full. And then I am going to go for screen. So we're doing that and we've got the screen. Now, sometimes when you're adding these in, you have to watch. I don't know if you saw it there, but you can see the line because of the screen blend. This is when you go into your masking. And I'm going to take the brush and I'm going to make it quite big, just using the shortcuts. And I'm on erase. And I'm just going to paint through the areas that I don't want, except this time I'm going to take the strength right up. So the areas I don't want, I am just erasing, like so. So that's better. So now I can jump back to that one. I'm already in masking, brush, and I can get rid of these areas here. So you can see how this builds up and just some of the things that you have to look out for when you are creating these. Another one I'm going to add, going to see all, is the big one here. Now this is a cracking one, but this is kind of, emulates an anamorphic lens, so I like this for my composites. So I'm going to take that full up there, depending on what I'm doing, and I'm going to go into screen. Now it looks too much and it just cuts through the entire image. But remember, you can place it and you can place it wherever you want within this. And if it's too big, I can do that with it. The other thing I can do as well, as you will notice, because we've went for a screen blend, it actually adds some of the tones in. So if I go back into it, if I go there, see the faint line just there? So what I'm going to do with this is, I'm going to go back into masking, brush, make sure I have a big brush, and I'm just going to paint out there. And that's it. So that's another one done. So you can see it all comes together relatively quickly for this. I don't know what my time is now, but I know it's not 35 minutes. Final ones. So let's flip. No, let's not flip it. Let's leave it like that and just turn the opacity right down. Because we've still got some of the colour coming through. Everything's in there right now. Let's add a final one. Let's go for that one. That's okay, I think. But let's see if we can change the colour of this. So let's go into the hue shift. And let's see if how much we can match about there. Right, not happy with that, not happy with that, but the good thing is I can mask it. So if I take the brush, I raise and I make a big brush for this. I can paint out the ones that I don't want. That's okay, that one's not so okay. Uh, that's okay, It's a nice one going on there. So. Because that one's there, I actually quite like the effect of that, but I'm going to take the strength of the arrays down. Just to there, just to cause that tiny bit, and even with that one as well. So we've, we've got them there and we can see that they're there. There is one final one that I've still to add. I'm noticing something in here, so it must be from that one. Mask, brush, it must be from there. Yep, that's the magenta going in there. Right. This is the last one we're going to add. And again, this is from, from Pro Edu Assets. And I'm going to go in, and it's this one here. And you can see the effect that that has. But when I place it over there and stretch it to about there, perhaps bring it in a bit, what I'm doing is I'm trying to match it just roughly. To about there 
And we'll leave the opacity at that and we'll also go for a screen blend. Let's just play with the opacity here. And I'm going to leave it at that. Let's just go into masking just to check that I can't see any lines. And I can't see any lines. So hopefully this time it's been quicker and you get the idea. Yes, it feels rather rushed and I do have longer ones that I can do with this to explain the entire process. But I understand your time is valuable. If you'd like to see a longer Luminar Neo compositing video, please put it in the comments below. 35 minutes, as I say, I just felt was too long for anyone. But you can watch it in chunks, plus I can put time codes in if you want. Hopefully that's given you some ideas how to put them together in Luminar Neo. And after that, it's just down to your imagination. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.